What's going on, peeps? In my never-ending deep dive of the Tally Hall world, I find myself in the realm of Mr. Yellow Tie, Rob Cantor. I find Rob to be the brains of the group. I mean, when you have a degree in molecular biology, have a successful indie band, several viral videos on YouTube, and now you're working with Disney? Surely the dude knows what he's doing. Rob Cantor might have the most impressive resume after departing Tally Hall, as well as the biggest glow-up. In this video, I'll be going over how Rob Cantor became the genius he is today. Rob Howard Cantor was born on August 26, 1983 in Bloomsfield Hill, Michigan. He is currently 41 years old. Cantor was raised in a Jewish family having his bar mitzvah at Temple Israel in West Bloomsfield Township, Michigan. He is said to have grown up in the rough suburbs of Detroit where a great amount of violence including knife fights supposedly happen all the time. His first musical attempt was to learn piano at five but quit after a year. The boy eventually learned a guitar from his dad at age 12. Shortly, he was inspired to start singing after seeing his sister in a musical. This led him to learn different instruments like the French horn and cornet that he played in middle school. Years later, he attended Andover High School and played in a band called Listed Black with Zubin Seji and Zach Craftsman. While pursuing music, he used to act in high school, which will come in handy later. Cantor would later be accepted into the University of Michigan. He majored in molecular biology and minored in music. During his first year at university in 2001, Rob played acoustic sets at the Arc to test out a few songs he'd written that year. It was a great way to garner feedback on his music to the general public for the first time. In the fall of 2002, he formed indie rock band Tally Hall with bassist Zubin and musician Andrew Horowitz. Cantor would be a guitarist and vocalist for the group. He also joined Joholi's comedy group Anonymous, bridging towards the band lineup we know today. After graduating, Rob moved to Ann Arbor to study for the MCA Tees. However, a persistent voice kept telling him to pursue music full-time with Tally Hall, which he did, turning down a full medical school scholarship. There's a reason I call him the brains of Tally Hall. The guy knows what he is doing. Cantor performed with Tally Hall until 2011, their never-ending hiatus, releasing two albums, Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum and Good and Evil. The band was mostly known in the Michigan area until its massive resurgence in the 2020s decade through TikTok, nine years after their hiatus. But that's not all yet. After stepping away from Tally Hall following the Good and Evil tour in 2011, Rob moved to New York City to continue writing songs without planning to make an album. Cantor opened his website that year, robcantor.com. After writing more tracks of his own, Rob played them for producer Greg Tronic, who liked them. They were then recorded at the laboratory, starting with All I Need Is You. It was going to be a four track EP but the project would just grow into an album. Cantor even got his Tally Hall bandmates to help out. Andrew co-wrote and produced the Rendezvous and Perfect, Ross helped out with the drums on Old Bikes, and Joe was featured on the remade version of I'm Gonna Win. In 2012 Cantor created several viral projects, including songs and videos shared on his SoundCloud and YouTube. He released comedy songs like Christian Bale is at your party, the evil sounding Kaku about child labor, and Shia LaBeouf, also known as actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. I know, pretty extreme claims there, I'll explain. The idea for the song came when Rob and Andrew Lorick were helping a friend move, and Andrew started dramatically whispering Shia LaBeouf's name. They found it funny, and later, Rob wrote a full song about it, imagining the actor covered in blood, chasing terrified victims through a dark forest. To be fair, that's pretty damn funny. Cantor posted a demo of the song to SoundCloud on March 3rd, 2012, where it quickly went viral. It caught the attention of actor Rob Lowe and eventually Shia LaBeouf. It also made the front page of the Boing Boing blog, helping it reach half a million streams. Let's break this madness down, okay? He tells his cryptic comedic story about the actor Dr. Shia LaBeouf as a cannibalistic serial killer with pounding percussion from Bora, creeping strings, bright piano chords, and grooving bass. The live version also has these dramatic choir vocals that creep in and out. Cantor tells this story in a menacing, worried, spoken 
spoken word tone on the verses before the harmonic anthemic chorus that makes it into this cinematic orchestra masterpiece it is. This is the type of thing you'd run to at 3am for your YouTube recommendations. Picture it, you're walking in the woods with a dead phone, but then you spot Shia LaBeouf out of the blue, 30 feet back with blood on his face. You begin running for your life, but Shia begins to catch up with you with a knife in hand. An actual cannibal. After a while, you appear to lose him in the dark. You hide, knowing you are stranded with a murderer in the deep woods. You tiptoe through the underbrush and see a cottage light in the distance. As you move towards it, you get your leg caught in a bear trap that forces you to chew off your own limb to move forward. You make it to the doorstep, but stepping inside is the murderous Shia LaBeouf sharpening his axe. He didn't hear you enter, so you sneak up behind him before strangling the superstar. You're fighting to grab the knife out of his cold, bloody hand and stab him in the kidney. You're safe at last. You walk back into the dark woods with blood dripping down what's left of your leg, but you've won. You've defeated Shia LaBeouf. The story appears to end, but not on the live version two years later. On October 21st, 2014, Cantor released the music video for a live version of the song. The video mimics a live concert and features dancers from the Gay Men's Chorus of Los Angeles, the West Los Angeles Children's Choir, and Argus Quartet. Surprise! Shia isn't dead. You now have a gun to your head with a menacing look in his eyes. Thankfully, you can suddenly do jujitsu. You body slam him on this Tuesday night. You swing an axe at him, but the blood is draining fast. He dodges each swipe until you just catch him in the neck. You chop his head off, decapitating Shia LaBeouf. You fall to the ground and catch your breath, knowing you are safe from Shia LaBeouf. As Shia LaBeouf claps in the crowd, no wonder they were able to perform the song without breaking out in laughter. They were intimidated by Shia's presence. This became a big meme as well. Cantor shared that it took four months to plan, one day to film, it involved 161 people. The production won a Webby Award and generated 82 million views. The Fine Brothers even had massive YouTubers react to it back when they mattered. But two years previously in April 2012, Rob and his friend Ricky Lax attempted to create a musical called Mr. President, there's an asteroid headed directly for the Earth, but their plans fell through with Amazon Music not picking it up. Later that year, Cantor contributed to the music project Miracle Musical, led by Joe Holy from Tally Hall. His next stab at virality involved another actor, Christian Bale. An electro-pop rock throwdown using samples from his well-known angry rant on the set of Terminator Salvation. After a crew member accidentally interrupted a scene, it was uploaded to Rob Cantor's YouTube channel on July 18th, 2012. The doorbell rings. Here comes in. Uninvited Christian Bale to your party, sitting alone eating all the queso dip around. He also takes your phone to use it instead of his own. Why don't you understand that this is a problem? Suddenly, he's flirting with your ugly niece Amanda that Bale calls Patrice. He then sells pieces of this frozen pizza he brought with him. Suddenly, he starts stabbing your wife with a carrot while making fun of your kazoo. Following that moment, he runs naked through the crowd that worries for his safety. Someone calls the cops and they make their way towards the scene. After being in handcuffs, he vanishes into thin air. Pretty wacky story, but I think this might have a darker meaning that is likely a massive stretch. Could this be a warning to people who throw parties that they might need to keep in check with every single guest that enters the area? An uninvited creep could make their way through and cause madness. It describes the dangers of party culture in a comedic way that makes no sense out of context, but secretly does. Why don't you fucking understand the problem? As he gets let off with a light sentence by the justice system due to a lack of proof, mainly because nobody at the party was paying attention. He moved to Los Angeles, California in 2013, currently living in Santa Monica. Following years of viral videos and studio time, Cantor was set to release his debut solo album, Not a Trampoline. It was announced for 4-14-14, aka April 14th, 2014. By March 4th, the album became available for pre-order on Bandcamp, alongside two tracks, Old Bike and Ghost. Okay, but what does this title even mean? Not a trampoline? 
Turns out it comes from a trip that Greg Tronica and Rob took after finishing the recording sessions, where they saw some signage with similar phrases. The original artwork was meant to feature a single flamingo feather, but Rob felt like it looked too serious for the album's tone. Around the same time, Bora emailed Rob a cover he created to replace an auto-generated one from iTunes, which Rob found oddly fitting. They then went to KFC to buy chicken wings for a photo shoot and created the final cover that same day. The project would be promoted by Rob's street team through FanBridge. Fans could join by checking a box when signing up for Rob's mailing list, which added them to the street team. Rob asked his street team to promote his songs through social medias and music blogs. In return for their help, he offered various prizes including special fruit baskets and digital goodies like mp3 demos, behind the scenes videos, and images. Now track by track, let's explore this. Opening track Ghost is quirky 2010s indie pop rock filled with haunting piano chords and synth vocal sample breakdowns about regrets, betraying them as ghosts that sneak into your room at night and haunt you. It comes from the perspective of a greatly depressed man unsure about whether he wants to live or not, refusing to try to avoid failure, and having a hard time letting things go. Upbeat Indietronica piece Garden of Eden speaks from the perspective of a father hoping to raise his son right instead of being incredibly strict to match a perfect picture, from birth until his son is ready to live on his own. So far the album definitely seems of its time, it's a snapshot from the mid 2010s when indie pop was surging as the club boom faded away. Speaking of nostalgia, Old Bike is a heartwarming nostalgic blend about your first bike as a kid. That first taste of freedom. All those peaceful night rides you had with it. It also appears to be a big metaphor for a long lasting life. How you've been able to carry yourself through this ride from finding friends and living freely to having to deal with reality. You enjoy yourself until you can't. Cantor sadly admitted that his bike was stolen in 2013 and has yet to replace it. All accompanied by wonky synths, bicycle sounds, infectious harmonies, and acoustic guitar pickups. Ends with a key change and a heavy synth rock instrumental. Then there's the Rendezvous. Pretty simple breakup regret song where the man goes back on his decision and wants to give love another chance. All over a fairly dated bassy dance pop keyboard and synths. At least Rob and Matty Diaz have a good amount of chemistry that makes the melody a lot more catchy. This is just what the music industry was creating at the time. Ah uh, yes a Tally Hall fandom favorite. I'm gonna win. Known for half of the lyrics being taken from all of my friends, a Joe Holy demo. It originally was supposed to be featured on Good and Evil, but was cut due to time. Anyway, it's a bass tune dedicated to doing everything he can to win, even if it kills him. Seems like it's being described in the form of an actual fight with his darkest thoughts. Contains hard-hitting synth guitars on the verses, leading to the blissful ballroom keyboard plucks on the hook. His favorite song the album is All I Need Is You, dedicated to someone he loves dearly that all he could ever need. It isn't known who it is about. It could be about one of his best friends, his wife, his children, or his burrito. Could be either or. Features an acoustic guitar lead with electronic buildups throughout, creating an explosive final verse and cutting performance from Cantor. Now, despite him being the brains of Tally Hall, he is still a bit of a weirdo. Only proven by the electro pop rock of Flamingo, with a funky bass line and horns that appears to be literally Cantor rambling about being a flamingo. Or it's about him being free in life, who knows. The nerd also whips out some Spanish, why not? The way he says Flamingo is really funny though. The deep dramatic tone to it. To be honest, it reminds me way too much of the overproduced side of AGR. More harmonic electropop rock continues on the telenovela or the soap opera. I see this as a group of people being overdramatic and getting upset over misunderstandings and disagreements similar to a soap opera. A clear hint at ego issues with, we can be wrong but somehow we always think we're right, hoping to make things right towards the bridge. One major highlight is perfect that we'll be talking about more shortly. This cutesy catchy indie pop tune with twinkling bell chimes, ukulele, bright synth melodies, and warm inviting vocalization. All about loving someone despite their flaws. The only concern being that they might be taking advantage of them. It was co-written by Cantor and former bandmate Andrew Horowitz who reconnected in Los Angeles six months after Tally Hall's hiatus. Let your mother know is a friendly reminder to reach out to your parents or people you love when you're going through something difficult. Look around, let it out, 
out, let them care for you. You don't need an invitation to come home. You just can't smoke all your problems away. On to the two pretty depressing cuts. In Memoriam is a tribute to the actor Alan Alda, a precious ballad filled with strings, piano chords, and wonderful harmonies. May he rest in peace. Wait, he's alive? 88 years old, huh? Well, in that case, this is probably that awkward moment where you believe someone famous from several years ago is dead, but they are actually still alive. Like that one time CM Punk's little sister thought Kevin Nash died in 2011. If you know, you know. Finally, guitar-led ballad, lonely but not alone, with various electronic effects to end off this charming record. Those times where you aren't alone, but you feel lonely. To draw more attention to this album, Rob Cantor had an idea. On July 1st, 2014, Cantor shared a video called 29 Celebrity Impressions, One Original Song, where he and Andrew performed Cantor's song Perfect from that album using 29 celebrity impressions, including one of his own. <laughs> Horowitz was on the piano while Cantor sang the impressions of popular characters, actors, and musicians. I'm talking about Randy Newman, Jack Black, Kermit the Frog, Louis Armstrong, Christopher Lloyd, Willie Nelson, Bono, Golem, C. Buscemi, Billie Holiday, Frank Sinatra, Peter Griffin, Gilbert Gottfried, Ray Romano, Adam Sandler, Glenn Stefani, Patrick Warburton, Ian McKellen, Shakira, Britney Spears, Jeff Goldblum, Christopher Walken, John Lovitz, Christina Aguilera, Cher, Flipper, Bjork, and Bob Dylan. The video got over 750,000 views on its first day and reached 6.5 million views by the end of the week. A male singer doing several female impressions really impressed people. But a week later, he revealed in a behind the scenes video that the impressions were faked through audio and video editing with 11 different impressionists actually involved. It was done in 39 takes all to promote his new album. Cantor had successfully fooled the internet. I've been saying this since the beginning. This dude is a genius. I've heard that many Tally Hall fans discovered the band through this video. The thing about Cantor's music is that it definitely fits in the silly, sometimes kid-friendly territory, besides the tracks about actors being monsters, so it's no shocker that he got involved with Disney. The man has been very much involved with Disney Junior creating music for the Tiny Ones Transport Service. Goldie and Bear, and The Ghost and Molly McGee. The latter includes a one-minute original song by Cantor in each episode. He often collaborates with Genevieve Goings to produce Disney nursery rhymes, lullabies, and children's songs. As of today, he's the head of music for Pupstruction. Cantor is overall doing incredibly well for himself. He currently lives happily with his wife and two kids in California. I genuinely think that if Tally Hall was to ever come back, it'd be the toughest decision for him as he's got a lot going on for him. In comparison to others, the dude is completely unproblematic. You just can't hate him. This is why I find Rob Cantor to be quite the genius. One more time everyone, say it with me, the brains of Tally Hall. If you enjoy this video and want to see more, like and subscribe for more base content. Give me suggestions in the comments. I'm aware this is a shorter video in comparison to what I've been making lately. I'm juggling college, work, personal things, and this. Just let me cook. I'm preparing and making time for some stellar videos. I'll see you all in the next one. Make sure to love all and peace. I love you.